Hi there, welcome back to the DevOl. I am Roman and this is the fourth episode of our F Sharp introductory series. In the last episodes, we talked about expressions, about control flow with the if and else, and the pipe operator. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch it. For Clara, everything runs smoothly at the moment. She makes some money with her ice cream truck and she has some time to read some advertisement blocks. In those blogs, people told her that she really needs some new stylish names for her, for her flavors and she, she needs to build a brand with this. Um, but Clara really has no time to, to invent no f new flavors, so she um, decides that we, she will just use new brand names for her existing flavors. So she thinks about it a bit and then she comes up, uh, she comes up with two great new names so for her strawberry flavor um, she invents the new name red rising and for her vanilla flavor she has the new name cream dream what are we going to do in this episode we are going to implement those new aliases and we're doing this by using a new concept which i haven't talked about it yet which is function composition so in the uh, I think second episode we talked about functions, but we barely scratched the surface what is possible in F Sharp with this. So we dig a bit deeper in this episode and we try to, to build our first function composition. So, those kids. We want to implement our new two new ice cream flavor names, Red Rising and Cream Dream. But for this, Clara really doesn't want to change anything else. So we want to keep all our, our, uh, our existing functions and we don't want to change our price for function. We just want to have another function that maps the old um, names or the new names to the old names and we can reuse everything else. So we can define a function ice for uh, map flavor and we say if flavor equals red rising then we return strawberry otherwise we return vanilla awesome we can evaluate it so it's a function that takes a string and returns another string and then we can just use our new defined flavors called red rising, pipe this into our ice4 function and pipe the result of this into our price4 function and pipe the result for this into our, let's say, day results function with 50 and evaluate this and we get our new value and we didn't have to do a lot we just um, used another fun or introduced another function and we could reuse all of our old stuff so now we could um, introduce a new function called let price for special and here we say ice or flavor and we say we get the flavor, we take the flavor, put this into the ice four, and put this into the price four function. So we abstracted a bit from this, and now we can uh, just say red rising, and we pipe red rising into price four special and we pipe this into day results 50 nice so as you see we we get back the result of, of 45 euro we define a new function price for special and we use this to to um, evaluate the price for our new defined flavors but in fact, we, it's just one new function. We didn't do anything new in here. We can have a look at the function, which is price for special, which takes a string and returns a float. Why is this the case? Because 
flavor needs to be a string because the input of the ice for function needs to be a string. And we will get back another string. The input of the price for function is then this string and this function will return a float. So in the end this whole function takes a string and returns a float. And this is what we are able to, to, um, to express in a, I think, much cleaner way when we use function composition. So we say price for special comp. And what we do here is we say ice for composed with price for. Whoa, it's a new operator, a function composition operator in here. And we can try and use this function in this context. And we will get back the same result. And we see here that the price for a special comparator takes a string and returns a float. So what actually does this, this operator? Well, it does exactly what I was trying to explain to you in here. It takes this function which is one parameter, which is the input parameter of the whole function. And then it uses the output of this function as the input for this function. And the function um, composition operator creates a new function, which is called price for special comp in this case, which is then those two functions combined or composed, which means that the Again, the ice for function takes a string as the input, has a string as the output. The price for function takes a string as an input and has a float as the output, which in turn, in turn means that we can't change the order of the function composition. If I'm going to comment this out and say price for ice for, we will get an error. Why is that? Well, because it says we're expecting a float here, but what, what we're giving to this function is a string. Why is this? Well, this price for function has the output. Let's check it. Float. So we, it needs a string as an input and it returns a float. This function here needs a string as an input. So the output and input types of those two functions do not match. So that's all to, there is to function composition. What you need to remember when you want to use this operator or when you want to create new functions out of other functions is that the output of the first function, the type of the output of the first function needs to match the type of the input of the second function. So in this case, we have an output of a string. And in that case, we have an input of a string. And the function that is returned is the composition of both functions. So we help Clara to define great new names and hopefully brands for her flavors. And everything seems to work for her. She makes a lot of money, but in fact, she has no real overview how much she's going to or how much she was um, selling and how much money she was earning. This is what we're going to solve in the next episode when we are starting to talk about lists. See you there. Bye.